We have studied the two goods model assuming smooth and well behaved preferences. A key conclusion was that an interior optimal solution would have to satisfy MRS is equal to minus P1 over P2. Let's have a look at an example when the indifference curve is not smooth. Here is a picture demonstrating the optimal bundle when we have well behaved but non smooth indifference curves. In this example, the optimal indifference curve has a kink at the optimal bundle as its slope jumps from one value to another. The indifference curve is strictly decreasing and strictly convex, so preferences are well behaved and the optimal choice must be unique. However, the derivative of the indifference curve and therefore MRS is not defined at the kink. Imagine adding a tangent to the indifference curve at the kink. There is simply no unique way of doing that. Since we have no MRS, we have no first order condition and the basic strategies of finding the optimal bundle will fail. In the next slide, we will look at an example of how to find the optimal choice in this type of situation. Let's say that my goods are perfect complements. Here is a picture demonstrating the optimal choice in this case. We have the budget line and we have L-shaped indifference curves, out of which I have drawn only one. The optimal choice is the X1 star X2 star bundle. Even though the indifference curve is not smooth, voiding the existence of MRS and the first order condition, finding the optimal bundle is pretty straightforward. Suppose that goods are only consumed in pairs. Then you know that an optimal solution must satisfy X1 equal to X2. This restriction, together with the budget line, will give us the optimal bundle. Let's look at another interesting case. Say that we have strictly monotonic preferences with smooth indifference curves that are convex but not strictly convex. In this case, optimal choice need not be unique. The reason for that is that with convex preferences, indifference curves may have segments which are straight lines. Here is an illustration. I have my budget line and here is one indifference curve. This curve is convex but not strictly convex and we see that there are many bundles on the budget line which are optimal. All bundles on the red line segment where the indifference curve overlaps the budget line will be optimal. If we have two goods that are perfect substitutes, then preferences are convex but not strictly convex and multiple optimal bundles is a possibility. Remember. If two goods are perfect substitutes, each indifference curve will be a straight line. In my first graph, the slope of the indifference curve is equal to the slope of the budget line and there will be an indifference curve completely overlapping the budget line. In this case, every bundle on the budget line is optimal. Consider for example the case where we are willing to substitute the goods in a one to one ratio and where the price of each good is the same. In this case, it really doesn't matter if I spend all my income on good one, all my income on good two, or in any other combination. The total number of goods I will be able to buy is all that I care about, and this quantity will be the same no matter which bundle on the budget line I pick. In the second illustration, the indifference curve is steeper than the budget line. Here. The optimal bundle will be a boundary bundle and I will spend all my income on good one. This would happen, for example, if the consumer was willing to trade two goods in a one to one ratio with MRS equal to minus one and the price of good one was lower than the price of good two. She would then naturally spend her entire income on good one. The opposite is true if the budget line is steeper than the indifference curve. She will spend her entire income on good 2, x to star is equal to m divided by p2. We have considered strictly convex indifference curves as well as convex indifference curves. Let's consider the case when indifference curves are not convex at all. For example, let's consider an example where the consumer has concave preferences. Here is my budget line and here I have drawn two indifference curves that are concave. As you can see, there is a bundle x1, x2 where the first order condition is satisfied. The slope of the indifference curve, MRS, is equal to the slope of the budget line minus P1 over P2 at this bundle. However, 
this bundle will not be an optimal bundle. Actually, this bundle will be the worst bundle out of all the bundles on the budget line. Any other bundle on the budget line will reach a higher indifference curve. The optimal bundle in this case is the boundary bundle x1 star x2 star. An individual with strictly concave preferences will always select a boundary bundle. Let's also have a look at a few examples where preferences are not strictly monotonic. My first example illustrates the case when good2 is neutral while good1 is desired. Preferences are then monotonic but not strictly monotonic. Here is my budget line. If good2 is neutral, then all indifference curves will be vertical lines. Better bundles are further to the right. The optimal bundle will be the boundary bundle x1 star comma x2 star, where the consumer, not surprisingly, spends her entire income on good1. In my second example, I have a satiation point, and preferences are non-monotonic for large quantities. Here is my budget line, here is my satiation point, and here are some indifference curves. In this example, the satiation point is affordable, and it will therefore become our optimal bundle. Any bundle on the budget line will be worse than the satiation bundle. If the satiation bundle is not affordable, then a bundle satisfying the first order condition will be optimal, as long as both goods are desired and the indifference curve is convex at these quantities.